A January transfer window and a must-win Champions League match against one of the best teams in the world. It's just a standard day in the life of one of these Aberdeen episodes. So let's run the intro and get right into it. Hi everybody, Jake here. Welcome to the Aberdeen series. Huge one today. Not only do we have a league game to show you, which should be quite comfortable, but a Champions League match against one of the best sides in the world. A second leg where, of course, if it doesn't go well, we could be out of the Champions League for another year, which we don't want. And just to let you guys know, the reason there was such a delay between this episode and the last one is because I'm solely focusing in on the Champions League now. So I wanted to get to a point where we had an important Champions League game to show you. But it's going to be a big episode today. Before we get into all of that though if you guys could smash the like button for me i'd massively appreciate it. it will really help with the video's performance and if you're in this percentage of people that aren't yet subscribed but are still watching this series up to this point i'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button so we can get close to our next target of 17k and then hopefully before you know it 20k subscribers but we've got a lot to get into today a lot of time has passed january transfer windows um, a playoff knockout round in a champions league that we've already made it through lots to cover you saw us play this game last against Barcelona in November. Since then, we went on to win a bunch of games, including beating Benfica away, Molder away, and plenty of other wins in the league. The Champions League, though, which we're mainly focusing on, we had a loss against Fiorentina, a loss against Bayern Munich away from home, and it meant that we went into the playoff round as opposed to auto-qualifying from the original Champions League league phase. We got put up against Monaco, who we beat 6-0 across the course of two legs. We're in great form, and then we played Barcelona, where we've gone and won 3-1 in a very unlikely victory they were all over us and if you feel like this means oh we've already won today certainly not the case the second leg is going to be very hard at the new camp in the first leg they were absolutely dominant we got very lucky some late goals as you can see Valetic scoring from a corner Oderberts was a deflection Wilhelmsen was a goalkeeper mistake we rode our luck and the fact that Torkelson got an 8.2 shows you just how unlikely it was that we got a win there, but we take a 3-1 advantage into the second leg. We're also playing St. Mirren today in the Scottish Cup quarter final, just as a second game to show you guys, and that's going to be the first one. But to show you where we're standing currently in the league, 30 games played, the same as everyone else, but we're eight points clear at the top of the table, only losing one all season. Knocked out of the Premier Sports Cup, as we mentioned last episode, but the Scottish Cup looks pretty winnable with neither Celtic or Rangers left in the competition. We've also seen some big shocks already with Bayern Munich going out of the Champions League, Liverpool and PSG, PSG being the team that won it last year, Dortmund have knocked them out. So currently it's Milan, Man U, Madrid and Dortmund going through with potential of Ajax, Fiorentina and maybe Man City going through. If Fiorentina go through, I'd love to get them in the next leg. But right now we're purely focusing in on this Barcelona game. But the fact that so many giants have been knocked out already, it's given me a little bit of hope. I can't lie. And I'm hoping that means... We might be able to do something this year. I don't want to get ahead of myself. We've also had the January transfer window, as mentioned, where not too much happened. We had a few players that flirted with a chance of leaving, but it didn't come about. Um, a lot of players that wanted to leave that didn't get the moves they wanted. And in terms of incomings, we brought in one player, a player that I've been eyeing up for a while, waiting for him to be of an age where I could actually sign him. So we've gone for him. It's Mateo Turan, who isn't even on a release clause, a Uruguayan centre-back, squad player, 18 years of age, plenty of potential. He comes in as like our fifth choice centre back I didn't really plan on using him this year more for next season we're bound to lose one of the two center backs we've currently got but just so you know we bought him in for a very cheap fee of three and a half million I'd say cheap anyway considering just how good he looks now but just to show you what's been going on we've got players like Wilhelmsen, Perea, Fivey, Valetic all of which have came forward and said they wanted to leave in the window if the right club came in so we set their target prices and no one came in for them. Perea was only going to leave for 39 million, Villa came in for 37 so we got quite lucky to keep him there. Wilhelmsen no one came in for, but he does have that £32 million fee. Trevor Fivey wanted to leave, but we set his value at £20 million and no one wanted to come close to that. And then Valetic is someone that we bought in a few seasons ago. He has a release clause, so if someone's going to activate it, we'll lose him. But currently we're fine right now. But overall everyone's doing great in terms of the squad as a whole. If we go to tactics and then go to average match rating, you've got Wilhelmsen having the season of his life so far, way outscoring 
considering any other season that he's had. And it's this year where he's had some real competition up front. So maybe that's drove him to be a better player. We'll be using a rotation team against St. Mirren today. Hopefully it'll be quite a comfortable one, but we just need to rest some players ahead of the Barcelona match. So if we do end up losing, it won't be the end of the world. I just want to make sure that our main 11 are resting. So we're going for Tukelton in goal, Mike Wilson, Morrison, Estevez, Odiambo, Guy Buer, Fivey, Ibrahimovic, Duke, Odeba, and Wilhelmsen. That's our team for the day. Hopefully they can get the job done, get us three more points. I say points. I keep thinking this is a league match. It's not. It's a cup match. But if we can get through here, we'll be looking very good to potentially win this competition because St. Mirren are probably one of the best teams left. I think there's fourth in the league this year. They are having a good season. But I still feel like we've got a good enough 11 here to go out and get the win. And there's early pressure now, three minutes in, with Odeba in the box, finds Ibrahimovic. Ibrahimovic scores. It's almost too easy now when we see these domestic games. We're so much better than everyone else, other than maybe Celtic and Rangers. And we've proven that here. We're going up against a very decent side in the division in the cup today. And straight away, we have a goal after three minutes. Hopefully, I haven't talked the talk too early. And now St. Mirren are going to come back. But I feel like we're just going to dominate, get loads of goals from players, have everyone in good form, rest the ones that might potentially play the next match, like Odiambo, potentially Odeba as well, who's been in good form, Wilhelmsen. I'm sure we'll get some game time against Barca so we'll see what we do but there is Duke playing into Phil Helmson who misses from a few yards out and if he does get a chance against Barcelona if we do choose to use him up front he can't be wasting chances like that but I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who gave their support on the last episode I mentioned that a few people were saying they were going to unsubscribe and whatnot because of the whole new gen situation basically most of the signings I was making in the game at this stage were new gen players and a lot of you basically came out of the woodwork of people that don't usually comment but wanted to comment just to give their support to say that's what they like watching and it's nice to know that of course that you guys still enjoy that side of things I know the transfers maybe are more fun when it's players that you know um, but obviously we're five or six years in now so we're not really going to be signing too many real life players unless we get some great deals on people and um, because we're aiming to buy young players here so good to know that you guys are enjoying it thank you for all the support in the comments and to the people who maybe have a different opinion and don't like the new gens Fair enough, completely fair enough. Feel free to come back for the next series that we do um, or whatever it might be. But yeah, just thank you to everyone for those comments. It did make me feel a lot better. Not that it bothered me too much, but I did start to think maybe people don't like the new gen. So it's good to hear that some do. And whilst I've been talking and saying a few too many soppy thank yous, Phil Helmson scored a goal and there's been a red card for a player from St. Mirren for a second yellow. We'll certainly take it. It'll make our life a lot easier today and we can start to take our foot off the pedal a little bit. But um, as a side note as well, this series has probably been the most successful series I've done on the channel, maybe outside of the Newcastle one that got a big wave of views a couple of years ago when Newcastle got taken over. Um, so thank you guys for that. The support has been unreal for the amount of episodes that we're in now. 30 plus, I think you guys have shown support all the way through. And hopefully this will be the year when we win the Champions League. And once we do that, this series will end and I'll do a little channel update video I suppose on where the channel is going to go because some things might be changing on here going forward I'm not fully set on it just yet but I think based on the way that I want the channel to grow and from what you can see if you just go on my channel and look at the performance of some videos you'll see when we do the one-off rebuild videos that they do far better than any episode of a series would do and it makes sense who's going to watch episode 31 of a series when we're this far through it's not very likely so we might start aiming the channel a bit more towards those rebuilds at least try it for a little bit maybe towards the end of fm23 just to see how it grows the channel if it helps and if it's something worth doing we are three nil up as well by the way at half time you probably saw it ibrahimovic had a penalty he took it away it was never really in doubt and it's been a dominant performance so far exactly what we would have expected just a nice bit of fitness for some players ahead of that Barcelona game. And it's so nice that we can just play a team like St. Mirren and call it fitness because it's basically what it is for us at this stage now. Very unlikely we ever lose these kind of matches. Here's Trevor Fivey and he crosses it in towards Wilhelmsen. I think it was a shot. Wilhelmsen got his head on it, gets his 30th of the season. I mentioned last year that I wanted a 30, 40 goal a season striker and that Wilhelmsen wasn't the man. He's proven me wrong now because he's just hit his 30th and there's still a few months left of the season. Good header in low past McNicholas in goal for St. Mirren with 4 0 up. I think once it hits 60 minutes, maybe after this highlight, we'll start to rotate some players here. Here's Wilhelmsen going for the hat trick, charging forward, taking it past one, knocks it off to Odeber. Odeber on that left hand side, a very solid player for us over the last couple of years. 5 e oh, it's brilliant football, amazing goal from his there. 5 e to Wilhelmsen, knocks it on to Duke, who even after all this time still gets goals. 
And it's been called offside, so maybe not. But uh, it was really nice play up till that point. You can see Wilhelmsen was offside there, so it isn't going to count. But Duke took it well. Good link-up play between a few players up front there. Now let's get some subs on and rest some of these players. Just the three subs for now. Alfie Bavage coming on up front. We're also going to bring on Macias in that half-back position. And Wilson Esbrand at left-back. You might be thinking, Jake... Halfback? What are you on about? Well, I probably should have mentioned that a few seconds ago. About a few months into the season, we swapped our deep line playmaker role over to a halfback. It's not really a role that I've used, but I saw Stinger, uh, FM Stinger, if you don't know him on YouTube, brilliant creator, did a video about the halfback. I think it was on the Manager's Seat channel, um, which is also another great channel if you want to check that out. Uh, and he showed just how good the halfback could be. I've switched into it now, into our tactic. And the performances from our deep line playmaker, usually it's Gomez, have been so much better now. And I really do like the halfback position. I see what it does now. They kind of drop in to that centre-back role, almost form a back three. And it's a position that we're going to use going forward. Since we've used it, you've seen much better average match ratings from the likes of Sergio Gomez in midfield. And it's not really had a negative impact in terms of what they're doing on the pitch. So we're very happy to use the halfback. And our new halfback on the pitch, Macias, has just got an assist straight away there, crossing it into Odebert, who rises tallest at the back post, makes it 5-0. We'll be going through to the cup semi-final. And it should be pretty smooth sailing from there, hopefully another trophy to add to the cabinet the amount of success we've bought with Aberdeen side over the years is actually crazy to think about but St Mirren are going to go forward here to potentially pull one back from a corner Munro crosses it in and they do rise highest to it it's going to be Welsh who heads it back into the net not the most amazing goal in the world a goal conceded from the corner not really what you want to see this Munro must be a set piece whiz because he's played another one in there but this time we've got on it Torkelton grabbing the ball unfortunately we don't get the clean sheet but it's not the end of the world we'll still take it our rotation side here absolutely destroying a very good Scottish league team and hopefully we can get one more goal maybe for Trevor Fivey or Alfie Bavage would be nice to see them get on the score sheet maybe an Ibrahimovic hat trick there's something coming and it is Ibrahimovic on the left hand side running forward tries to cross it in it gets cleared away as far as Wilson S Brand who started to really play well at left back this season he's one of the more senior players in the team at this stage at like 24 25 years old and he's playing really well here is Bavage falls out to Odebert Odebert turns hits it over the bar and I think that'll be that for this game a 5-1 win a red card for St Mirren an easy game at the end of the day and now all our sights turn to that Barcelona match so let's get there just had a youth intake come through doesn't like the best one in the world there's not really anything going on it did say beforehand it was going to be a poor intake a shame we got so many good ones at first and now we can't seem to get a good one for the life of us it would be nice to have some better young players coming through doesn't look like that is going to be the case this year i just wanted to quickly show you that youth intake nothing too special let's move on to barca and it's happened fiorentina have gone through they've knocked out ren man city also knocking out arsenal so there's not a great deal i mean every team left in the competition is still very talented of course but a lot of the major teams are gone. If we can avoid maybe Man City, Man United in the next round, we have a very good chance of making a semi-final again. And then if we can go from there, anything can happen. Like last time, we ended up in the final, got beat by PSG, but on another day, we could potentially have done it. Hopefully Ajax can knock out Chelsea there. Even I'm a Chelsea fan in this in-game world, we want them gone from the Champions League. I'd much rather play Ajax, but let's pick this team for today's match. It's going to be Estevez. It's going to be Valetic and Andraval. Odiambo, I think we we're going to change to Wilson S. Brand, Gomez Kozlowski, Macias, Vazoni, Perea and Paolo. That's going to be the side that we go for to try and get the win today. Okay, so I've just been to have some dinner. Hopefully that will give me the extra, you know, energy to really manage this team properly um, and make sure we get that win. So let's do this. Right, Barcelona. Well, like I said the first time around when I mentioned it earlier, yes, we are free one up. Does that mean we are through? In some games, maybe. Against Barcelona, no. They are really, really good. I mean, just look at that first 11 there. Full of so many great players. Lukaku, in particular, was a real threat. And in that first leg, yes, we won 3-1. But I think Barca had something like 3.5 XG. We had something like 1 XG. Basically, Torkelton was the reason we were still in it. So we're just going to take this minute by minute. Hopefully keep making it through 10 minutes at a time without conceding a goal. Um, I genuinely think if Barca score one, they will score three or four. That's obviously then going to be down to us to try and put one past them as well. Um, but basically, it's just not going to be easy at all. And here is De Jong straight away. Ferran Torres should have been a goal. We are so lucky. That should have been one nil up to Barca already. We make it out alive. Possession massively in their favour. Starting to get some back though, 60% to 40. Who says Barcelona are the kings of tick attack of football? Not me. Aberdeen is the one for me. Um, but yeah, we're about 30 minutes in now, getting close to it. 
and nothing too crazy happening just yet. One big chance for Barca, they didn't put away. They are dominating the game, dominating chances and dominating possession. Um, but right now, we're just happy that we're still in it. Look, I could have gone and changed the whole tactic to be this defensive thing to make sure we get through the game. But it's not how I play football manager. We've got our way of playing and we just hope that we can eventually get to the point where we're better than these kind of sides. We got the result at home. If we can get some kind of result away, we'll certainly take it. But they're through now with Ansu Fati. Ansu Fati back to Frankie de Jong. He sets up the shot for Fati, takes it, hits the bar, bounces. Tuck Elton gets there. We haven't conceded just yet. We survive for now. 30 minutes in, 0-0 on the night. 3-1 on aggregate. We'll certainly take it. Another, you know, two-thirds of the game to go. If they all go like that, we'll be more than happy. We're about to go into half time. If we can just about make it. With a 0-0 scoreline, a 3-1 advantage. Chelsea 2-0 up against Ajax, so it looks like maybe they won't be going through after all. But we've done beautifully so far. What a way to put it. Well done, everyone. We're still leading on aggregate. Let's make sure that's the case come full time. Trevor Shalaba has came on for Jules Kunde. Not sure what happened to Kunde there, but he has gone off. In terms of our performances, I haven't really looked, but I um, feel like individually... No one's going to be shining. I imagine the attacking players in particular, seeing as we don't seem to be creating anything at all, not even shots that aren't highlights, but shots in general, and we're not creating anything. And here is Lukaku. One touch takes it past Estevez. Vizzoni does really well. Obviously, the Real Madrid player on loan against Barcelona. He'd love to have an impact today, and I'm sure that would really uh, please his uh, fans at his current club of Real Madrid. We're playing it around nicely, you know. We might actually get a highlight here. Maybe it won't be for Barca. So Wilson Esperan going forward, finds Macias. Macias, Vizzoni. Is it counted? I think we've scored. I think Vizzoni's just scored. We, we mentioned the man from Real Madrid. He's just cut in and scored. Ah, nothing really. Well, we'll certainly take it. You know, I always had confidence we'd go through, guys. Never really doubted it at all. But Macias plays it in. Vizzoni makes that run, pulls away from Fringpong, tucks it away. We might just do it. We win this and suddenly we're in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Eight teams left to go. Uh, you know, a lot of the big boys will be gone if we do make it through. Barca, PSG, as we know, have gone out. Bayern, um, and if I think Liverpool as well went out, didn't they? So, you know, if, if we can keep this up, who knows where we might go? Will we win it this year? I don't know, but we'd certainly hope we could. Here is Perea on the left-hand side. Could we seal the deal? A 5-1 aggregate victory. We're currently winning 1-0 at the bloody new camp. It's Kozlovski. Kozlovski's in. What's he tried to do? I think he's tried to chip to Stegen. What a silly idea. Hasn't worked, but you know what? I can't complain about any of these players' performances so far because we're doing it. And I'm not even thinking about changes right now. I'm just saying, you know what? Carry on as it is. We'd have to concede three goals now in 20 minutes for it to go to extra time. Certainly not completely unlikely. If Barca get one, I do think they'll get another. But hopefully that goal that we got will give us the edge. And we're going forward again. Starting to create some chances since Trevor Shalabas came on. No offence, Trev, um, but it's working for us. And here's Vizzoni. Oh, we've hit the post. Oh, he was offside, but it was, it was a close one. And I think it's now time to take Paolo off. We'll bring Phil Helmson on, and my leg under the table is just bouncing. Yeah, my legs won't stop moving. I feel like um, I feel like there's a lot of pressure riding on this one. We might just do it. Sergio Gomez, what have you done? Oh, I took Elton. He saves the day. Our halfback, Sergio Gomez, has a blunder moment then, but took Elton was quick to move to it. Um, but yes, I'm very, very excited right now at the prospect of knocking out Barcelona and having another crack at this Champions League. One ball forward from Tor Kelton, nearly gets all the way through, doesn't quite though. Estevez loses out on his header. Kessier finds Ferran Torres. Ferran Torres cuts it back to Stipendi, whoever that is. And then Gavi hits it over the bar. We are scraping by here, but we're certainly not complaining. And we're going to go again. Another highlight where we try and play out of the back and it doesn't work. But Gomez this time does get there. Look at that football. Route one stuff. Forget your tiki taka. We are just blasting it forward and hoping for the best. And it's Ansu Fati. Long ball forward towards whoever that was. Ferran Torres has tried to get to the ball. But Valetic has got there. And as the minutes tick by and the seconds move, it's looking promising. But oh my God, Gomez has lost it this time. Cassie scored and it's time to bring him off. He was having a good game up to that point. Made a couple of quick errors in the last few times we've seen him and he's being taken off. I can't risk that anymore. Can't risk him on the pitch. And we're also going to bring on Odebert for Perea, who since his whole move away situation just isn't playing at the fullest level. I don't think he's too happy at the club at the minute and I think that's causing an issue. That Gomez error, really unfortunate. It's going to be 1-1 on the night. But right now, Still two goals yet to concede in 10 minutes for us not to make it through straight away. And we're going to go forward again. It's Macias. Crosses it in towards Andreval. Header off the bar. Nearly goes in. The Brazilian young defender. Rose Hyas got his head to the ball. Didn't quite go in just yet. But we've given a good performance here. 1.78 XG at the new Camp is pretty impressive. Here's Valetic. 
We'll take a win at the new Camp. Why not? Valetic's your centre-back. Scored one in the first leg. Scores another here in the second. We're not someone that works loads on our set-piece routines to try and score loads of goals. You'll see that because I don't think we've ever had a centre-back before get three goals a season that Valetic has got. But it's nice to have someone that can win headers every now and then. And he scored two goals this season against Barcelona. And we might actually be about to do it. Have we just knocked out Barcelona from the Champions League? Have we just beaten them at the new Camp 2-1? Is it going to be free? It's Estevez. It's into the box. It's Andraval who rises highest, knocks it over the bar and just let the minutes tick away. We've done it. Masterclass. I really didn't think we'd make it through here today. And like I said, Barca's still excellent XG, but their finishing just doesn't seem to be on point. 22 shots, only five on target. We did everything we needed to here. We won two matches against Barcelona. Chelsea have knocked out Ajax in the end. Unfortunate for Ajax, but as a Chelsea fan, it's not the end of the world. And we are now through into the quarterfinals. The teams that will be there will be Fiorentina, Manchester City, Dortmund, Real Madrid, Milan and United. I would take Milan. I would take Fiorentina. Everyone else, let's just see how it goes. I mean, Barcelona were top of their league. I don't know where Real Madrid are. You'd assume second, right? Uh, no, they're now first in La Liga. Clearly a very close battle between those two. But with Barca's two games in hand, they are the better team in the division. So the fact that we've knocked them out gives me confidence we could beat Real Madrid if we got them. I don't know when we get the draw for the next match. I'm not sure if I'll even show it. But if it is a game where we dominate the first leg, I won't record the second leg. I'll just get on with it and hopefully be able to show you guys a semi-final or a final. Or more than likely what I'll do is I'll record it. And if we go through, I probably won't upload it until maybe we're in a semi-final, final stage. So who knows? Maybe next time you see us, we'll be in a final. I'm only going to you know upload the videos that really matter. So if we make it through in the quarters... Do we need to see the round of 16, quarterfinal, semifinal, final? Maybe not, so we'll see about that. But anyway, enough jabbering. That is the end of today's episode. We've managed to do it. We've knocked out Barca. We're a few games away from a Champions League final yet again. Hopefully we can do it. If you have enjoyed the video, smash the like button for us, subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.